Okay, 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 okay. What is up guys? Welcome to uh, Coffee with Gaz. And this episode's a bit of a lie. Because <laughs> this is tea. Um, drinking some tea. But, 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 but also, um, the, <laughs> the state of the current situation. Shit on my desk. A knife on my desk. Wearing this vest. Got my mic on and everything. It's all kind of uh, relevant to the topic of this video. Because the topic of this video is bargaining with yourself. And the reason it is titled that is, and the reason I'm, I'm discussing this topic in the first place is essentially because this is something that is relevant to my current situation in this moment. Because basically what I'm doing is I'm sitting down with my cup of tea and I'm doing a bit of study because I really wanted to go out for a walk and do a bit of exercise, kind of a walk run kind of thing with my vest. So I've got my weighted vest on. I've bargained with myself. I've said, look, guys, sit down, do what you need to do, do your little bit of study, laptop on, notes out, knife out. I'm not even gonna explain the knife, but but yeah. Um, prepared, essentially, to do some study, have just been doing some study, and basically the bargain I gave myself was, you know, sit down, tick your next study list off your to-do list, off, uh, off that list of tasks that need to be completed, and then what you can do is you can go and enjoy your exercise. That's your, your little bargain with yourself. And ideally, what you wanna do is you wanna create a life in which you could say where your life is so shit and so boring where your rewarding tasks are actually still beneficial. So in this case, exercise is like a treat. It's actually a treat to be able to go and exercise, but obviously that also makes you healthier and fitter um, and all that good stuff as we know. So basically you want to create your life so that you know your reward is actually going to exercise or your reward is going to study um, rather than your reward being, you know, I don't go and binging on a load of Cheetos or something like that. Uh, but yeah, that's essentially the topic of this video. So, tea goes cold a lot quicker than coffee does because uh, there's milk in it. So, I may be sipping a little bit more during this uh, than I normally do. I also want to see what the audio quality is like. I uh, got the Rode Wireless Go mic on, so the receiver's on top of the camera. The mic is here, so I may need to play around with the settings. It's literally my first time using it, so we will see how that goes. Um, but yeah, so topic being bargaining with yourself. I just gave you a personal example, but um, this is something that I use quite a bit in my own life in terms of trying to motivate myself to do things, you could say. Um, and like, obviously, we can all just be, you know, be real hard-headed and just say, doesn't fucking matter gonna do whatever I say I'm gonna do, that kind of thing. But what I've noticed with a lot of my clients is that, uh, especially during this time, during the lockdown and stuff, we have had to come up with a lot more strategies, some strategies that I haven't implemented before in order to kind of support people's motivation or commitment or discipline to what they're actually doing. Um, for example, one, one example this week was, I made a suggestion to one of my clients that she actually be a little bit more harsh on herself with her planning of her training. And what, what I mean by that in this context is that she, like many others, found that the structure given to her by being at her work, um, she's a PhD student, so um, her work slash education, the structure that that gave her throughout her every day because she had to be somewhere at a particular time and she knew when she'd be going to the gym and it became a kind of a ritual kind of thing. She found that that obviously supported her adherence to the training process because she knew that at you know at six o'clock at seven o'clock I am in the car on the way to the gym everything is set out gym clothes are there meals are prepped all that sort of stuff you know so everything is set out in advance to facilitate adherence to that process however now that people are at home they may be noticing something that you know it's a little bit paradoxical because one would assume that the more free time and flexibility that you have that the, easy, the easier it essentially is to then adhere to the training process or to nutrition or anything like that because you got more free time, you got flexibility, you got more autonomy, etc. However, they're like, it's, it's not as simple as it sounds. Everyone thinks it's going to be like that until you're actually given that opportunity. And personally, I've essentially been living this way for, for years now, where having your own business, working like for yourself essentially, 
you always have a little bit more flexibility in terms of when you do particular tasks. The same can be said for college. You know, yeah, you have deadlines every now and then, but studying is something that there's never really an urgent need to do until it's, it comes exam time. So without these like day-to-day -day rituals that guide you on when you need to do particular things, like obviously when you're in college, you've got lectures that you need to be at. That hasn't been the case for the last um, couple of months. So all of those things, um, can be surprising facilitators of adherence to the process, whatever that process be. In this case, it's the training process. So what I suggested to her was that she tried to find a way to recreate um, that sense of, uh, I guess you could say, like the, the lack of lack of autonomy, the lack of having the choice. Because what she was finding, and what, what many others have found as well, is that waking up in the morning, you're like oh, I've got the whole day ahead of me. And you might have thought the night before, I'm gonna work out in the morning, but then what you found when you woke up is that, oh no, I've got freedom, sure, I'll work out later on. However, other things then come up later on, you don't feel like it, you just had your dinner, your belly's full, or you're just about to have your dinner. Those different type, types of things. Um, it's very easy, it's much easier to just rationalize your way out of training today or out of having a productive session. So my suggestion to her in this case was that she actually be a little bit more authoritarian and that she say to herself, if I don't train in the morning, because that's her goal, she wants to train in the morning. If I don't train in the morning, I am not training. Like that's it, like boom, I am not training if I am not training in the, if I don't train in the morning and it's gone 9 a.m., I haven't trained, boom, I'm not training today. Because although it is yourself that you are kind of bargaining with, or in this case, punishing, you could say, or trying to discipline, um, it, it, it can work, okay, it, and it, re it really can work because what you begin to do is after a few days, like if you've missed two workouts in a row because you didn't get it done in the morning, then now you're like, okay, right, I need to fucking sort this out. I, I need to sort out my routine. I need to sort out my habits. I need to get this in place in the mornings. Um, and that's kind of an extreme example because in that case, you're kind of encouraging someone to remove their flexibility totally um, and to potentially miss workouts so that they can start to reinforce this, this behavior this behavioral loop, these habits, this routine. Um, that can sound a little bit extreme, but it totally depends on, on your personal context in terms of like what you need to implement because it's very easy to just say, oh, just train when you feel like it, do whatever you want when you feel like it, but anyone that has worked on their own or worked for themselves or had to guide their own training times and stuff for a long period of time, you know as well as I do that it's not that simple. It's not as simple as more flexibility equals getting more shit done. It's actually like almost the opposite sometimes. Like for me personally, the busier I am, the more I do, you know? It sounds paradoxical but the, the busier you are the more you have to like really start to fine-tune what you spend your time on um, how you manage your time um, how effective you are at using your time all that sort of stuff you know because you start to manage that whereas when you have this big open day ahead of you it's very easy to say oh I'm gonna go for a two-hour walk now and I'll come back and I'll have a shower and I'll take my time cooking my lunch and I'll read a few Facebook posts and suddenly it's six o'clock and you've done fuck all you know, um, that's, that's, that's not what you want. You know, you don't want to come to the end of the day and, and to, to, be, to be the person that, that just essentially did nothing. So to, to kind of bring this full circle, basically that was an example of kind of being more authoritarian. It's not exactly bargaining, bargaining with yourself as much as it is trying to kind of like basically impose a particular schedule on yourself. Um, the bargaining with yourself can be a little bit softer at times. And what that would essentially entail is uh, including some sort of some sort of reward or some sort of compromise for engaging in the things that you know you should be engaging in. So in this case, I really wanted to go out for a walk. I wanted to go out and I wanted to listen to a podcast for a while. I wanted to get a bit of exercise in. I wanted to go out and get it into the sun because it's absolutely beautiful out today. So for me, you know, I needed to first say to myself, okay, can you get some of what you need to do or need to get done squared away? Because I've got a lot of study to do. So I need to get some of that stuff squared away. You know, another example was, you know, this morning, um, basically what I've got locked on my laptop is like an app called Freedom. So it'll basically block me out of Facebook and, and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube, whatever, all the, all the distracting apps for from like 9 to 6 p.m. and 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So what that meant was that within that pre-9 a.m. window, 
I had to get the triage work uh, scheduled for the day that involves social media. So putting out um, any posts that we were scheduling, um, editing those posts, etc. that needed to be done before 9 a.m. So that was squared away then. And what that means then is that I have more freedom throughout the day to be able to do the study tasks that I need to do um, because I found ways to basically um, impose a schedule without a schedule uh, being imposed on me. So I'm trying to impose certain restrictions and time limits, etc. that then I build my my day-to-day -day habits uh, around. In that case, it was like, okay, that if this is in place, then that means you have to do your triage tasks pre 9 a.m. Um, or you're gonna have to wait till 6 p.m. And that's obviously not ideal. So try to get them done uh, pre 9 a.m. Um, and then in the exercise case, in terms of getting out for a walk, it's a case of me saying, okay, look, you've got this to do, so here's a bargain, Gary. Uh, do your little bit of study, get that done, 30, 45 minutes, get your coffee with gas video pumped out. I like to do these on a Friday, get that pumped out. Um, and once you've done that, you can go out and enjoy yourself for a while and then come back, get back to the desk, or you're in trouble, man. Um, so yeah, that's basically my way of kind of bargaining with myself. But but I mean, you know, it's... Um, it's one of those things where you only have to do what you have to do. You know, some people get real obsessed with with self help and scheduling and productivity tips and everything, but but they don't need to. You know, sometimes you you, you just don't need this stuff. So use this stuff as you need it. You know, if your life is squared away, you're exercising as much as you'd like, your nutrition is on point, um, your finances are going very smoothly, you're where where you want with your career, etc., um, and you don't need to improve any of those areas, then you needn't take my advice or you needn't listen to some of the suggestions that I've offered. But if you're someone who, you know, like me, has a lot of different things that you're trying to juggle, um, you know that there are certain priorities in your life, like getting out for exercise, um, but also studying, you know that those priorities exist, then sometimes you have to bargain, you have to prioritize, you have to periodize, and you have to know where you're actually going to allocate your time and allocate your efforts, or otherwise you're gonna end up basically off the path or on someone else's path that you didn't necessarily choose to be on. So um, hopefully there's something in there that was that was useful. That I know that was a little bit kind of off topic because I said bargaining with yourself, whereas some of it isn't necessarily bargaining, some of it is, all right, you know, you need to be a bit harsher. Some of it is kind of, you know, trying to bargain with yourself a little bit more, but it ultimately all comes back to, um, you know, who you are, who you think you are, who you want to be, are you going to become who you are, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, sort of real basic, uh, basic uh, stuff that we should all be thinking about on a regular basis when it comes to the behaviors that we engage in. Are they aligned with our values, with our, you know, personal kind of sense of identity, with where we see ourselves going in life? because it's very easy to overlook that stuff when you have short-term pleasures, short-term rewards, um, or on, conversely, basically the, the dauntingness of the more difficult things, the pain, the struggle, etc., that's associated with the steps that you need to take to move towards that goal. So you need to come back, you need to ask yourself those questions, you need to know, right, what am I actually aiming at? Like, where, where, where am I moving towards? Because otherwise you can't make those decisions. And that's the thing, because I'm able to bargain with myself because I know that exercise is a big priority in my life. It's a non-negotiable, non-negotiable. But so is study. Study is a non-negotiable, okay? You have to learn, you have to get better, Gary. Don't be fucking stupid. You know where you're going. You know, you're like, I know that they're my priorities. Absolutely, 100%. Therefore, I need to be able to bargain with myself sometimes and, and say that, all right, Gary, you know, you've got an exam on Monday, you've got an exam on Wednesday, you've got an exam on Friday, then you've got an exam on Monday, and then you've got an exam on Wednesday. You've got five exams coming up. Summarizing are basically uh, the, the accumulation of all the information that you've learned in your first year. So you need to prioritize that. Like right now, that's your priority. That's number one. So that means that even though exercise is a big priority in my life, absolutely. Favorite hobby, favorite, uh, one of my favorite areas of interest, you know, intellectually you could say, like really interested in exercise, it's my job, etc. It's a big priority, but right now, where's the urgency? You know, where's the urgency lying? The urgency lies with the study because that is the priority right now. And if I am going to go and exercise or if I'm going to, I don't know, read fucking David Deutsch's The Beginning of Infinity even though I'm not being examined on it, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna put that stuff that matters to me, if I'm gonna put that stuff ahead of and allocate more attention to that, 
than my studies at this point in time when there's a clear sense of urgency that gives that the edge, then that would be stupid. That makes no sense, you know? Um, so yeah, I like to be a well-balanced individual in terms of my value. So what I mean by that is exercise always a priority, nutrition always a priority, you know, trying to be healthy, trying to be fit, um, trying to read broadly beyond just my studies all really, really important things um, that matter to me personally. They don't have to matter to you, but they matter to me. So all those things matter to me. So I always keep them in my life to some capacity, but the key point here is that there has to be some element of periodization. There has to be a point where you recognize that the competition is looming, in this case it's exams, and that more of your attention needs to be allocated towards one particular task. So when you have that backdrop, when you know what your priorities are and how they vary at different points in time, then you can start to do the bargaining process, the disciplining process, because you can start to build your behaviors around that. So hopefully that gives you guys some things to think about. Um, I know people generally enjoy these types of discussions and to be honest, like as much as exercise programming and giving nutrition guidance and stuff like that, as much as that is such a key part of, of my job in terms of coaching and what I discuss with people every week with my clients, like honestly, like you could say that probably 50% if not more of, the, of those discussions revolve around this kind of stuff. And that's why I'm trying to put it out on the YouTube channel because I know that if my clients are struggling with all this and they have these questions, you probably do too. Um, so yeah, hopefully something useful guys. As always, if you have questions, drop them down below. If you have feedback, drop, them, drop that down below. Um, especially when we're talking about this kind of behavior stuff, there's like, I'm not gonna say there's no right or wrong, but there are many, many different th strategies that work for people. And I mean, you could ask me the same question related to this next week or the week after, and I might give you a slightly different answer, <laughs> you know, because there's always something different that comes up. And that the reason I gave that example about um, my client this week that I was, you know, suggesting that she actually miss workouts to try and get this, this, uh, this schedule or this routine going where she trains in the morning is because that was more of an outlier example for me because I, I don't recall advising others th like that many times before. I've done it to myself, but I, I haven't really advised many people to do that um, before. And, and there are many different strategies that I found to work really effectively for people. Um, and then sometimes they're really simple and sometimes they're a little bit more complex. So, I mean, when we're talking about behavior change, you know, the most important thing is, is speaking with the individual. And that's why these conversations with clients happen so frequently and why people end up with some customized solutions. Um, and that's, that's part of being a coach. So we'll see you in the next one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. As I said, like, you know, comment below, but also like the video and subscribe or share it with a friend. That would be fantastic. And I'll see you in the next one. Remember that it is, in fact, too easy. And of course, be happy.